Hi, welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to be focusing on effective interest rates. This finds itself in the part of the Year 12 General Maths Syllabus for Unit 4 in Queensland. By the end of this video, you'll be able to convert an interest rate into what's called an effective interest rates, which will enable you to compare interest rates of different kinds from different financial institutions. As you can see, I've got a beautiful background today of New Caledonia. Sadly, that's the cruise I was meant to go on these holidays, but it's been cancelled as a result of COVID-19. Perhaps you've got a holiday you're missing out on as well, or perhaps you're just spending yours watching Mass. Kudos to you. You can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com if you've got any questions or if you'd like to moan about your lost holiday as well. Let's get started. So an effective interest rate is a way that we can compare interest rates across different institutions. So we have different ways of compounding interest rates. As you would know, 3% simple interest is not the same as 3% compounded. And compounded annually with 3% would give you a different outcome to 3% compounded monthly or quarterly or even daily. So we need a way to compare the different types of interest rates. Now the QCAA provides you with this beautiful formula on their formula sheet. It's the formula for an effective annual rate of interest. And this is what we use to make comparisons across different types of loans and investments. I'm gonna show you now how to unpack this particular formula. So you can see in that formula, you've got the little letter I. That is our nominal rate as a decimal, which means that if it's 3% per annum, you need to convert that to a decimal. That would be 0 0.03. We've also got the little letter N. It also appears at the top as a power. That N is the number of compounding periods in a year. So if it was a compounded rate monthly, there'd be 12 periods in a year, fortnightly 26, daily 365, and so on. So the letter N appears twice in this formula. That is not multiplied by N on the right-hand side. You've got to remember that's a power. And that's one of the common mistakes I see people make is forgetting that that is a power and they are just multiplying by N, which is not correct. Let's look at some worked examples to see how that we can apply this information. In our first worked example, we have a bank who has quoted an interest rate of 3.5% per annum compounded monthly. So we want to convert that into something comparable, which would be an effective interest rate, which would give me a new annual rate that I could compare to that 3.5% across different banking institutions. And we have to provide that information in two decimal places. So my very first step is I'm going to be to write the formula, and that's straight off the QCAA's formula sheet. Don't have to memorise that one, thank goodness. Step two, substitute the information we have into that formula. So looking at the question, I can see 3.5% per annum converts to a decimal of 0.035. I find that by taking 3.5 and dividing it by 100 on my calculator. I'm going to be dividing that by 12 because it's compounded monthly, and I'm going to be raising that to the power of 12 because it's compounded monthly and there are 12 months in one year. My third step is going to be to simplify this in small steps. So I don't want to round at each different stage because if I round too early, I'm going to get an, an accurate, a less accurate answer. I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So I'm going to write the little steps down as I go so the teacher that, can, that is marking this can see where I'm coming up with my information. And that's why there's the dot dot after 0 0.029 because there were loads of decimal places, but I don't want to write the whole thing out. That's very tedious. So all I've done at this point is the 0.035 divided by 12 and written an answer in there. And it's, like I said, break it up into small steps. Don't do the whole thing at once on your calculator. Next step, I've now simplified what's in brackets and raised that to the power of 12. I'm going to be subtracting one from that. And I've got an, a value for I of 0.03555 and it has lots of decimal places after it. Now, I need to change that to an interest rate. So I'm going to multiply it by 100 and then round that to two decimal places. I end up with 3.56%. That's my effective interest rate. Now, you'll notice in the question that I wasn't asked to find the letter I. I was asked to calculate an effective interest rate. So it's really important for step five that I write a statement. The effective rate is 3.56%. Um, sometimes a marking scheme will deduct a half a mark if you don't write the effective interest rate is 3.56%. So it's important to always get in the practice of writing a statement. Let's look at a second worked example. Which of the following investments would provide the best return? I've got bank A, 3.9% compounded quarterly, bank B, 3.95% simple interest, and bank C, 3.85% compounded daily. Well, I can take a guess just looking at that, 
that the bank A value is probably going to give me the best return. And the reason I know this is that simple interest is always better than compound interest. Oh, sorry, whoopsie. Compound interest is always better than simple interest. So I'm guessing that that 3.9 is going to do a better thing for me than the 3.95% simple interest. And looking at bank A versus bank C, I can see that 3.9% is better than 3.85%, although that compounded daily could end up making it better than the compounded quarterly. So I really do need to not just take a guess here and do the working. So let's follow those steps I followed before. Although I've inserted a new step this time, set it up in a table. Now you could skip this step altogether and simply do your working five um, the five steps three different times for each bank. But after a while, it looks pretty long on a page and it kind of can be a bit tedious for the teachers to read. And since most students don't set out the best way, it can be hard to find the information. We're looking forward to give you full marks. And that's why setting it up and organizing it in a table makes things so much easier for your teacher to find the information they're looking for. So here's how I would set it up in a table. First column would be the different bank names. Second column would be for my working, and I've set up a third column for that as well, just so that I can show you the steps a bit more neatly. And then that fourth column gives the result, the effective rate. Let's see how we would set this up. So first of all, I don't need to actually do any calculating for bank B because it's simple interest. So the effective rate is going to be exactly the same as the rate that's given there, 3.95%. So I can simply insert that into that far column, don't need to do anything else. Let's look at the working that we would need to do for bank A and bank C. Firstly, I'm going to write the formula into each of those. It's going to be the exact same formula. Once again, don't need to memorize it, pull it off the formula sheet. My second step is going to be to substitute information into the formula. And I can, if I set my table up with the right sort of width columns and rows, then it's fairly easy for me to fill this information out. And it's going to be the same process for both banks. So for bank A, I've inserted 0 0.039, that's 3.9% as a decimal, and I'm dividing that by four because there's four quarters in a year and raising that to the power of four. My third step is going to be to simplify that using my calculator, and my fourth step is going to be to present the next step of working, which is that particular number raised to the power of four, and then I'm going to put my final answer in that last column, 3.96%. As you can see already, it's making it very easy for me to compare the three banks when I've got the answer in that same column together. Now I'm going to do the same thing for bank C. I'm going to substitute the information into the formula and do all of the steps of working that I need to do to show my teacher how I've gone about um, producing my answer. And then my final answer is 3.92%. So we can see just looking at this table that the best bank for me to go with will be bank A. It produced what I expected, a higher effective rate than the other two options. So my last step is to write that as a statement. Bank A offers the best return with an effective rate of 3.96%. I hope you found this video to be quite useful today. I'd like to acknowledge the Jacaranda Maths Quest 12 General Mathematics textbook where I have used the worked examples. And if you'd like to contact me, as always, mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Have a great day, stay safe, and hopefully you'll get that holiday another time.